As soon as Alex tells me that Ducky has cancer, my heart sinks. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. So there is some concern about how properly her bones have healed. We don't want him to suffer. I'm never ready to lose him. It would be devastating, but we would, we would know what we were dealing with, which would be the best thing. Sorry, I made myself a bit emotional. <laughs> At number five today. I wouldn't do that cricket. In Bondi, five-month-old Cricket has well and truly settled in to her new life with Chris. There's um, definitely something going on. Cricket is obviously the kitten that I adopted a few months ago after she was found in a park, in a box. Good Samaritans brought the little orphan into the clinic. See, she's not mm. very happy putting that left no, she's not. She... front leg down. And x-rays revealed the tiny battler had a badly broken leg and needed urgent surgery. All right, I'm done there. She's had quite an interesting few months with me. She's understood the meaning of destroying furniture, keeping me up late at night, waking me up early in the morning. But now there is a new twist in the story of cricket. I feared this day would come, but I didn't think it would happen this early. She's only just turned five months old, and this purring, and this calling, and this bum in the air thing can only mean one thing's going on. Cricket is on heat. And Chris isn't the only male to notice Cricket's change in behaviour. Exactly how many guys have you invited around? This is kind of every dad's worst nightmare. Their little girl has grown up and there are hundreds of men hoping to get their little mitts on her. Oh, you're looking outside, are you? Yeah, you know why? Because you've attracted him. She's in season and she's not scared to let people know about it. I'm obviously a big believer in desexing cats. The last thing we need are more unwanted kittens. I'm just surprised she's come on heat this quickly. There's only one thing to do. She's coming to work with me tomorrow and we're going to sort this whole thing out. This girl has grown up just a little bit too quickly. Tomorrow you're coming with me. And he's going to be disappointed. Cool. Get the way of a young girl and her plans. Next day, Cricket is the first appointment booked in at the Bondi Clinic. Oh, hello. It's Cricket. Today is the very necessary next step in the saga of Cricket. Clearly, when she's on heat, we need to do something about it because when bad girls stay bad, eventually they're past catches up with them. She's just started to get a little, um... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yes, I know. a little bit, uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh-uh. I've kind of lured her in here on the belief that since it's a couple of months since the operation, it's time to check so how her leg's healed. Healed. Okay. And if that pin is, is nice and stable. Cricket had a bad fracture that required a pin to essentially hold the bones in place. That pin's now been in there for a couple of months. So there is an opportunity today to potentially remove that pin if the pin has loosened or if the pin is just no longer necessary. It's the same length, are they? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. She's got a full range of movement there. Yeah. So I just think probably the best thing for her is to take an X-ray. Cricket certainly had a good recovery and a good rehabilitation, but she's still been a kitten and she's still been jumping all over the place and all over me. So there is some concern about how quickly and how properly her bones have healed. The X-ray will show the metal pin in Cricket's leg and whether it has stayed in the correct position. Yep, go. Pin actually looks all right. It kind of looks like a normal humerus with a, a pin inside it now. Yeah. The X-ray is showing two really interesting things. First of all, the bone itself has healed up brilliantly. You would not even know there was once a serious fracture there. But secondly, the pin is not an issue. 
it's sitting well inside the bone. In fact, the bone's grown up and over the top of it. So it doesn't need to be removed today. Look how cranky you are. What is it? It's almost like she knows what's coming next. Well, they do have that extra sense, don't they? While the x-ray shows she doesn't need one operation, there is no dodging the desexing today. That is going to happen. And I'm going to make sure of it. Oh, you're a daddy's little girl, really, aren't you? Hey? Daddy's trying to be strong, so oh, let's, yes. let's get on with it. Hold the sympathy for a right. half an hour. This is your last chance, miss. OK, Chris is lovely as your dad, but he's way too young to be a granddad. You know? Thank you, Neil. Good to see you on my side. <laughs> At the Bondi Clinic, Chris's parenting skills are being put to the test. Five-month-old Cricket is on heat, so Chris has brought her in to be de-sexed. Going... Over and out. Lick your lips, yep. Yeah. That's pretty good. I guess the challenge here is not overcomplicating this surgery. It is very much a routine operation. It's a spay. It's an operation I've done thousands of times before. But somehow today, it's different. And it's different because it's cricket. She's my pet. So I found a uterus here, and certainly it's looking a little bit more inflamed, I guess, than it normally would be. They're the ovaries of a little kitten that's been on heat. You can see that they've got extra fluid in them, and they're really looking like they're busy. All grown up. What's that? That can't be the ovary there, surely. No, it's not, because the ovary's further up here. Yeah. It's a bit strange. Looks like she's developed a fluid-filled lump just in the wall of her uterus. You know, there is a chance that she's actually been able to feel this. It's not something she's been, I guess, able to communicate to me, and to, certainly she hasn't looked like she's been in pain at any stage, but to have a big cyst in the wall of the uterus, it, it's abnormal. In an animal so young, it's highly abnormal. But the fortunate thing is that today I can actually remove it. We may, through preventing an unwanted pregnancy, have actually prevented another disease from occurring. So that's a nice thing. OK. All so done. There's the other half of the uterus there. Yep. So I'm happy with how that's looking. I'll just release it to make sure that bleeding stopped, which it has. All right, we can start closing up. OK. Thankfully, what should have been a routine operation was just that. Everything's run smoothly. We obviously discovered the cyst in there, which was quite remarkable, but that's been removed. You waking up? OK, come on. You ready to look at me? Not yet. So now, it's full steam ahead to what should be a normal life. Well, normal, apart from the fact she lives with me. Good luck with that. Let me sleep it off. Mm -hmm. A lot of people complain about cats needing exercise, but for you, it's never really a problem, is it? In Bondi, it's been two weeks since little Cricket was de-sexed. Always that little bit too far away, right? But Chris's cheeky housemate isn't taking any time to rest and recuperate. Normally, an operation like desexing will slow a cat down for quite a few days, maybe even a week or so. For Cricket, not so much. In fact, if anything, over the last few weeks, she's kind of stepped up a notch. Now you're growing up, we should really think about well, school. But what if the teacher gets out a laser pointer? Is this going to happen? Instead of chasing male cats, she now chases lasers and balls all day, day in, day out. I always knew that cricket was a bit different. It's kind of the reason why I adopted her in the first place. I never really realised just how different she'd be. A lot of people think cats are independent. Cricket is not one of those cats. She's needy. This is what I mean. Just always has to be there. Centre of attention. We're going to have an interesting life together. <laughs> Number four. Oh, 
There you go, Chuck. Come on, come and see the bird vet, because I'm not it. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, it's an unusual role reversal for Dr. Andrew Machevsky. I know. Today, he's not the specialist surgeon. He's the worried pet owner. Meet Ducky. Hi, Ducky. What's going on with Ducky? She's got a lump. OK. Andrew is hoping avian specialist Dr Alex Rosenwax can provide some answers. She feels a bit lumpy and swollen around yeah. there. Doesn't seem to hurt her, but it's... Oh. It's got to be a little bit uncomfortable, oh, yeah. though. Yeah. What I can feel in there is a sort of oval-shaped lump, almost the shape of an egg, high up in the abdomen. So we see this quite commonly in chickens. Yeah. Um, because chickens lay a lot of eggs, they often get a swelling in the area of the uterus. Yeah. There's a couple of main causes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes an egg gets yep. stuck there, or just a yolk. Yep. Um, sometimes they get a cyst in that area. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, sometimes, or more commonly, we might see a growth or even a cyst or cancer forming there mm. in the uterus or the ovaries. That, that's no good. And you're right to be a little bit worried. Yeah, yeah well. Is that we're worried that that could be a cancer that we need to get yeah, into. Yeah. OK, all right. I'm not really used to being in this sort of position because normally people come to me and say, here, fix my dog or cat, and I, I'm no bird vet, so I'm, I feel like I'm on the other side of the table today, which I guess I am. I'm really quite worried about Ducky. I know she's just a chicken, but she's my chicken. I really don't want her to be sick. All right, so what do we have to do? What we'd normally want to do is do an X-ray and make a decision on what, what to do. Alex wants to take some X-rays so we can find out exactly what we're dealing with. And I guess I'm hoping we don't find cancer because that's really about as bad as we can get for that. OK, so I'm going to take it from you. Yeah, Just okay. pop her down there. At SASH, specialist surgeon Andrew Marchevsky's beloved pet chicken, Ducky, is about to undergo an X-ray. We're going to have to anaesthetise her or hold her down or something? No, we're not going to need to do that. We're just going to hypnotise her. Hypn hypn oh, OK. I've heard about this. Yes. <laughs> Avian vet Dr Alex Rosenwax is hoping the images will reveal whether a lump growing in the chicken's abdomen is cancerous. I'm hoping what we find is just a benign lump, because if that's the case, it's a simple fix. But I'm worried about it being cancer. And, you know, Ducky means a lot to me and my family, and, you know, I'm, I'm really quite concerned. Wake up, Ducky. Oh, there you go. All right, let's have a look at those x-rays. No. Yeah. OK, that's a lump. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look at that lumpy area there, that's mm. the white area there, mm. that's where the uterus is. So we've got a swollen uterus. When we look at the bones there, there's not a lot of calcium in there. Yeah. Unfortunately, that points more likely towards a cancer of the uterus. Poor duck. You're making me shed. As soon as Alex tells me that Ducky has cancer, my heart sinks because I really don't want to lose my chook. It's a grim diagnosis for three-year-old Ducky. Uterine cancer is very common in chickens because they lay a lot of eggs, so there's a really fast turnover of cells in the area. And that's why chickens, of all animals who lay eggs daily, get a lot of cancer. Fortunately, because it's so common, we've also developed techniques to deal with it. And although it's life-threatening, if we get it early enough, we can usually treat the problem. So my plan for Ducky is that we're going to put an implant into her. Right. Which lasts about four to six months. She's it's going to shrink, shrink the cancer okay, down. Right. Um, and she'll need some oral medication as well. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that unless we treat Ducky, she's going to be dead in a couple of months. With the treatment that Alex is suggesting, he says that she might be around for a couple of years. So I'm going to hold him to that. Hey, Ducky. Let's we'll see if we can get you sorted today. Hmm? Once she's asleep, we're going to roll her over and we're going to put the implant straight in. Ducky's concerned owner, Andrew, knows that although the procedure is quick, it's also incredibly risky. The problem with anaesthetics and birds is they can get deep really quickly and the next step from deep is dead. So we've got to be really careful and really quick and get it down, get it done and get her awake. Andrew hopes the implant will help shrink the large tumour in Ducky's uterus. <laughs> so just into the breast muscle. Ouchie. 
There's lots of room. Oh, 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 good girl. So what the implant does is it actually tells the brain it's not breeding season and that sends a signal to the ovaries and the uterus to tell them to stop growing and that usually shrinks the cancer. There's a big blood vessel there, we've just missed it, so that's good. With the implant now in place, Ducky must be taken off the anaesthetic immediately. Turn her <laughs> Let's turn her off, yeah. give her a flush, right. and wake her up. Are we there yet? Okay, that's just there we go. Eyes are starting to open and she's coming back to us. There you go, chicken. Are you awake? Are okay. you awake? All done. Ducky's starting to wake up from the anaesthetic and I'm breathing a big sigh of relief. Okay. I'll give you a bit of food. Hey. How long will it take before that starts to It takes shrink? about two weeks before it shrinks. Uh. And you'll see the main effects after about a month. Mm. Really, the implant lasts about four to six months. Alex has given us quite a good prognosis, but I'm going to have to monitor her to just see if this tumour does shrink away. Because that's the only measure of success we've got, and obviously that's what we're after. So in another month or so, we'll know a little bit more about how things have gone. All right, Ducky. Get you home a bit later, shall we? It's all right. Look, see, I bought some food for you. <laughs> Cricky time for Ducky and Crackers. It's been just four weeks since Andrew's pet chicken, Ducky, was treated with an implant to try and shrink a tumour in her uterus. Duck, duck, duck. So do you reckon these guys are good mates, Crackers and Ducky? Yeah. Now the off-duty surgeon and his daughter Phoebe are keen to see if the procedure has been a success. Ducky's actually been better since we've treated her. There wasn't much difference for a, a week or so, but I definitely think she's put on weight and she just seems to be a bit more interactive. So I, I think she's doing well. We're going to see if that lump's gone. Ooh, I think it has. How's that? That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's good. We got you around for a little bit longer. Yeah. Aren't you lucky? Hey, a lucky ducky. Feeling her abdomen, I can't feel the lump at all. It's gone. She basically had a cancer that was going to kill her unless we did something. Um, and we've treated her and she's come good. And that's fantastic. So she'll be able to wander around the backyard and stay a part of the Marchevsky menagerie. And that's a fantastic thing. This week's number three. To your friends, can you say cat? 30 miles away to the west in Marlow, Scott's good friends and fellow vets Claire and Michael Hamilton are worried about their 11-year-old Devon Rex cat, Winston. He was our first furry baby. <laughs> <laughs> a first little furry baby together. Hey. Gently. He's an important part of the family and he, he loves Maya. If you see them together, it's hilarious. I mean, he kind of rolls on his back and Maya's kind of gently slapping him like this. <laughs> <laughs> gently, gently. Well, he loves it, so uh, yeah. No, they're, they're really good together. Ever since he was a kitten, Winston has been plagued by serious health problems and now his symptoms are getting worse. We first noticed when he was about six months old, he developed allergies, so he was pulling his fur out and he was really itchy. He used to vomit a lot and he was really, really skinny. Eventually, we diagnosed him with inflammatory bowel disease. We managed him with a um, very, very strict hypoallergenic diet and steroids. He's done great for 10 years. But of late, we've spotted him getting a bit bad again, and he's continuing to lose weight. He's mm. continuing to pull his fur out. Something's changing, yeah. which yeah. is a bit of a worry. He's already been fed twice today. He eats and eats and eats and eats. So he's eating a lot, but getting skinnier. <laughs> Our concern is that in a lot of cats, IBD can progress to, to low-grade cancer. It would be devastating, but we would we would know what we were dealing with, which would be the best thing. So. It's 
between the sea. Sorry, I must have been emotional. <laughs> you feed it to Mr. Winston. It's really, really difficult as a vet um, when your pet gets sick, being on the other side of the fence, because you don't have that, the, the vet to go and ask. You have to make the decisions for yourself, but you're emotionally involved. You know, you love, love this little furry creature. I'd like to think that I'm the voice of reason. However, I'm quite worried about him this time. So, mm. yeah, there's something not quite right. Having ruled out other causes of Winston's weight loss, Michael and Claire have decided not to administer steroids, as they have done in the past. Given the severity of Winston's symptoms, they now need to take invasive biopsies. We need to rule in or rule out the bad stuff, yeah. because if we do give him the steroids, which might mask stuff, we might, not be, we might never diagnose it. Because if we miss the low-grade cancer and we don't treat it, that he's not going to be around for an awful lot longer. What do you think? Hmm? You're just thinking, that's quite nice. Scratch my chin. Mr. Hello, Winston. here he is. Uh, he's coming in. It's going to be a tense day for Scott's friends, Michael and Claire. He's all right. Oh, no, no, he's, he's, a, good he's a bit grumpy. Right. Their own cat, Winston, is coming into their practice for exploratory surgery. He's a, here's oh, your favourite little boy, boy, Louise. Little Winnie. Yeah, little to find out whether his inflammatory okay. bowel disease oh, has he's developed like into cancer. There you go, oh. hello. That was a little, yeah, no, little the evil that was, genius uh, cat. He's just eyeing up the exits, planning his strategy for escape. Both are concerned about the severity of the 11 year old's symptoms, especially his weight loss. Winston. Oh, Winnie. It's weird bringing Winston to work for a procedure, but it's also quite weird seeing Claire being so worried about him. What are you saying? Are you singing? <laughs> I'm worried about him as well, but Claire's a worrier, which is what makes her such a caring vet, I think. You're yeah. doing the jabbing, if that's OK. So I'm, I'm bad cop. Because I'm too... I get too worried about him. Yeah, that's fine. One, two, good three. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Well yeah, done. Good so it makes you feel what it's like to be an owner rather than a vet. It's pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. Mm. Mm. He's cross. Worrying about what might happen to him, if he's going to be OK, is he going to make it through the anaesthetic? Mm. Mm. All the kind of usual fears people have that we don't normally feel ourselves. Come on, then, Winnie. Let's go. I mean, we, we do it every day to everyone else's animals, but when it's your own, it's just a little bit peculiar. Just got to remind myself that it's it's for his own good, and hopefully, we'll find out why he's losing weight. The surgical procedure to collect the biopsies can be potentially fatal. But it's the only way for Michael and Claire to know whether Winston does have cancer and needs chemotherapy to survive. So the biopsies I'm taking here are full thickness biopsies of the gut. So the gut has multiple layers, and we're going to take a sample from the outside right the way through into the lumen of the gut, sampling all the different layers all at the same time. The, the downside with that is the gut content can potentially leak out, and that can be catastrophic. OK, how are you feeling, Louise? I'm ready. Right, good to go, Kim? Yes. OK, right. We're going in. Now that he's under the drapes, I yeah. feel completely fine. Surgeon Michael Hamilton is now starting the exploratory surgery on his 11-year-old cat, Winston. So the purpose of Winston's operation today is, A, to have a look around inside his abdomen, at his, at his organs, specifically his intestines, because he's losing weight but he's ravenously hungry. So we're gonna actually physically look at his organs and we're gonna take biopsies. Michael and his wife, Claire, who is also a vet, are extremely concerned that Winston's inflammatory bowel disease has become something a lot more frightening. Given his age, given his breed, unfortunately, he could potentially have developed cancer of his gut, which is not uncommon in cats who have inflammatory bowel disease. So how's it going? It's still going fine. I'm not scrubbing in today because I find it too emotional to get involved when uh, one of my pets is under anaesthetic. I was just to get a bit too anxious and, and stressed. OK. So the first thing we're going to do is just check his gut from one end to the other. And anything that looks abnormal, that's specifically where we'll take biopsies from. This is a bit of small intestine, which I have to say looks pretty good. Knowing Claire is so worried, Michael is doing his best to lighten the mood. At the end of the large intestine is uh, 
is his bum. And on the other side of that is a big Winston poo down in there. I hope you know how to get all that back in, Mike. Yeah, yeah, it kind of, <laughs> yeah. He's not got much of a pancreas here, I have to say. We're definitely going to take a little piece of that and send that off to the lab. Just going to check one of his, his kidney down in there. There's his liver. His liver looks actually pretty normal, which is good. There's no lumps, there's no bumps, uh, and it all looks normal. So I'm really happy what we've found here, or more to the point, what we haven't found. With no obvious signs of cancer, Michael has to take a series of biopsies to make absolutely sure Winston can be given the all clear. Yeah, so this is a little piece of Winston's liver. As well as liver and pancreas biopsies, Michael takes a further four samples from the different regions of Winston's gut. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of his stomach. This is a full thickness biopsy, right the way through all the layers of his gut. And by doing it that way, hopefully we won't miss anything. Although Michael has carried out this procedure many times, he's well aware that if Winston's gut is abnormal, and does not heal properly, there is a real risk of serious complications. It's high risk because you've basically made a hole in the gut. The gut content can potentially leak out. That is a big, big problem, and that's the major risk with this, this particular procedure that we're doing here. It can get really, really ill really quickly. It's called peritonitis, and it kills kitty cats, and it kills people too. Done. OK, so we've got all of our biopsies now. We are good to close them up. So you should hopefully bounce back relatively quickly from this. He's going to be cross when he wakes up. Not if he wakes up in your loving arms. <laughs> there he is. Hello, mate. Once we've finished the procedure, we're going to be watching him like a hawk for the next two or three days to make sure that he's not getting a really painful abdomen, spiking a really high temperature. Because if he's going to get peritonitis, he's probably going to get it in the first probably two or three days. Up into bed. Oh, it's oh, mummy. It's my little body boy. There you are, cutie. Was he a good boy? Yes, he was. He hasn't been cross. No, not yet. He's a bit time. time. <laughs> You're right, warrior. Much better, thank you. Yeah, much better now. Yeah. Much better now. It all looked normal in there, Claire. So yeah, good. Uh, probably home in a day or two once we're happy that he's uh, that he's all right. So yeah, and then just went and see what the barbs he says. It will be several long days before the lab results come back, showing whether Winston is go. clear of cancer. Only then will Claire be able to stop worrying. I will be nervous when we see the pathology results for the first time, but I'm just really happy that he's waking up and he's OK. You're all right, little man. It's a wan, it's all over now. Oh, the horrible bit's done. Are you glad Mr Winston's home? <laughs> Good girl. Good Mr Winston. It's also been an anxious time for Scott's great friends, the Hamiltons, after their pet cat Winston underwent exploratory surgery. We've had Winston's results back and they've been able to rule out cancer, which is brilliant news and we're so relieved and so happy. Um, they've confirmed he does have inflammatory bowel disease, which we knew he's always had. Um, that's OK. We can manage that. With no need for chemotherapy, a relieved Claire now has Winston back on steroids. This is food for Mr Winston. And already he seems to be coping much better with his inflammatory bowel disease. Should we give him his tablets to make him better? Are you making Mr Winston better? Yeah, clever girl. Maya's getting very involved. She's absolutely fascinated by it. If I left it to her, I think she would treat him about eight times a day. Good girl, well done. Look, look. More? He's going to get really fat. So far, so good. He seems to be getting a lot better. He's brighter. He's a lot happier. He's certainly improved in his demeanour. He's improved a lot. Uh, and he's more playful, happier. He seems already a lot improved, yeah. Really happy. Good boy, Mr Winston. Number two. Later that afternoon, two unexpected visitors arrive at the Richmond Clinic. Scott's wife, Zoe, with their new puppy, Scully. Hello. Hey. Hey, honey. <laughs> OK. Look who I brought to see you just because they love you. Hello, monkey pants. What are you doing? There may be 
just a tiny but quite significant chance that there is the other end of a dummy in her. Great. It's just that sort of day. We're all feeling flat about Rosa and suddenly Zoe walks in with our new puppy Scully. No, it's not a social visit to cheer us up. Apparently, she swallowed a dummy, which is not the news I want to hear right now. And I hope this isn't going to turn out to be a serious problem. I found two Brilliant. dummies like this, but mm. I've only found one of these. And the only reason I found that is because she threw it up. Right. So she threw that one up this morning and she has eaten and been sick again since, but no sign of the second one. My team and I brought Scully into the world just recently. All right, babies, all right, you come. Okay, here's on baby catching duty, Ems. I'm on. It was a complicated birth and it was touch and go for a while there. Any luck? No, not yet. But her brothers and sisters and her are all fighters. Oh, I did hear a squeak. Oh, squeaking. After everything that we went through with how close we were to losing her, it is just so gutting that she's already back at the practice. All right, let me have a little feel. Uh, unfortunately, I can feel what I believe to be this dummy. What we'll do is we'll do uh, a quick x-ray with her conscious. We won't knock her out and we'll see if we can see it on x-ray. Yeah. And then we're gonna have to work out what we're gonna have to do. I'm really worried for Scully. People might think that a dummy teat, ah, oh, it's soft, it should break down. But if it passes from her stomach into her small intestine, it could block. She could then get infection, she could get septicemia, and she could die. You are very naughty. Yes, you are. This is an incredibly dangerous predicament, and that dummy needs to come out. Can't be mad with you though, because you're so gorgeous. But you're very naughty. Going. Hey baby, okay, so be ready just to take this shot once I've got her in position. At the Richmond practice, Scott's dealing with a family emergency. Ready, x-ray. With nurse Nathan's help, he's urgently trying to find out if his new puppy Scully has swallowed part of a dummy. Right, let's have a look, So, jump in there. Hmm. So, Let's see if we do that. That's, uh, that's quite compelling evidence, isn't it? Yep. You fluffy doofus. So the x-ray is fairly clear as to where this missing teat is. The concern is how we're going to get it out. It's quite big, she's quite small, and at the moment we're quite worried as to whether she's going to bring it up or if I'm going to have to go in and get it. Let Uncle Nathan hold you. Scott is desperately hoping to avoid surgery, so he's giving Scully an injection Daddy of apomorphine to make her vomit. I know, I'm sorry, sweetie. Right. How quickly is this going to work, Scully? Very quickly. Yeah, she'll start vomiting. Hey, just pull back your ears. Just think it's this, or possible anaesthetic and surgery. Come on, sweetie, throw it up, please. Good girl. That's it. Sorry, sweetheart. Come on, baby. Let's say go on. Throw it out, please. Let's say go on. Go on. Go on. Anything? The injection works. But there's no sign of the teat. Come on, baby. But on the second attempt... Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Good puppy! Good puppy! Good puppy! Keep on being sick. Normally I'd wear gloves for this, but uh, with my fingers covered in our dog sick, it must be love. Hey, must be love. I've never been quite so excited to watch a dog vomit. And uh, she's avoided surgery. It was like a trying a conversion all in one. But I would like her to not eat anything like that again. <laughs> Good puppy. Hey. It's an incredible relief uh, and a weight off my shoulders that Scully's brought up this teat. It seems like a little thing, it's just a bit of plastic that a little puppy's vomited, but it means her daddy doesn't have to put her under the knife and perform surgery, so we're all very happy. No more dummies in the Miller household, no. All right, poor baby. Take the doggies for a swim. Yeah, is that lovely?
lovely. Here we go. Here we go, Papa. <laughs> Scully's like, this Good is girl, very Betty. new. What do you this think? As for mischievous little Scully, She's been on her best behaviour since the dummy ordeal. That's a good girl. And today, Scott and the family are enjoying some precious playtime together. It's like a wet mop head. You want to hold that? She's made a huge impact on our lives. The kids absolutely love her. Betty adores her and she's got a new spring in her step. And I honestly can't see a life without her. What do you think, Scully? Any good? Oh, uh, Scully's first go. Well, not too nice. bad, although Scully does turn out to be a drowned rat underneath all that. <laughs> <laughs> and this week's number one. Do you want to invite all your friends? <laughs> you do? <laughs> OK. OK, well, we'll invite all of your friends. In Sydney, it's a bittersweet day for Kate and her much-loved golden retriever, Benny. How do you feel about getting a cake? You do want a cake. Oh, look at this cake. Benny is about to turn 15, but a major health issue is overshadowing plans for his milestone day. Benny has regular ultrasounds, and three months ago now, I noticed that he had a very small nodule on his spleen. You're a good boy. If it's growing, whether that be benign or malignant, it's starting to pose a risk. They will rupture and Benny will end up dead. Mm -hmm. You've got to be here for your birthday, you realise. Kate has booked a CT scan to see if Benny needs surgery on the dangerous tumour. She's all too aware of the risks for her precious old boy. I've had Benny since he was really little. He was probably about three days old when I first met him and I instantly knew that he was the one that I wanted. Since then, we've been inseparable. He's a part of me. To be honest with you, Benny isn't really a dog. He's his own little person. You good? So good. Although Kate's extremely nervous about what the scan will reveal, she's trying to stay optimistic and planning Benny's birthday is the perfect distraction. I really wanted to have a birthday party for him this year. 15th birthday for Benny, so we've got like festoon lighting, bartenders, waiters, we've got chefs, the whole bit. What about this cake? Or do you want to do this one? When it comes to Benny's health, I'm the best bet there is. Benny is insured. He's been insured since he was eight weeks. I'm an advocate for pet insurance. I have done absolutely everything within my power to save this dog. Oh my goodness, this is the cake. This is the way I want it. What have you been doing with your life? 15 is a really good innings and every single Christmas, I always think lucky. this is gonna be Benny's last. And I keep thinking, how lucky am I? <laughs> Benny survived cancer five years ago. Kate's desperately hoping her brave old boy is still strong enough to weather this latest health battle. He's going to leave me at some point. And, you know, his euthanasia has rolled around in my head a million times. You just keep loving them until it's their time to go. <laughs> but he still wants to live. He still tells me every day of his life, he wakes up, he says, no, nope, I still want to live. Benny's scan is now just hours away, and it's the birthday boy himself who's giving Kate the strength to face the outcome. <laughs> Just want to sit down there? There we go. Good job. In Sydney, Kate has brought elderly Benny to the small animal specialist hospital, Sash, for a CT scan on his spleen, after an ultrasound revealed a possible cancerous mass growing on it. Hi. 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 How are you? Spila, nice I'm to meet you. How are you? Hi, Benny. Hi, handsome. Mm -hmm. Shall we go and see what's going on? Cancer specialist Dr. Speller will conduct the scan to check if the worrying mass is getting bigger. I'm nervous. I know. Oh. I'm really, really nervous. I felt like getting him and just 
running out the door. He's got his 15th birthday party in a month. So I thought, oh my gosh, Benny, like nothing bad can happen today. You're a good boy. Perfect. So nothing concerning on your exam, which is great. After passing an initial health check and subsequent blood tests, 14-year-old Benny is cleared to undergo the CT scan. What I don't want for him is there to be this giant splenic tumour in there and that it's going to bust in the middle of the night and I'm going to end up at emergency department and he's going to end up having to be euthanised on the table. Like, I don't want that for him. I want him to have a dignified death and I want him to have a good life. What do you see? Yeah, so it looks like the lesion has grown. It's not two centimetres. The tumour has almost doubled in size since Kate discovered it three months ago. My heart just sinks because I just know there it is. That's what I've been looking for. This is going to be a mega problem. It still poses a risk to his life. Yeah, that can potentially rupture. That still can rupture. Mm -hmm. He still can bleed out. It's a non-essential organ. So if he's got a better chance of survival by removing the whole spleen, then that's what we're doing. Hi! That was a bit rough, wasn't it? So tired for an old boy. But given Benny's advanced age, Kate knows surgery to remove the spleen could also be life-threatening. <sighs> Stupid tumours. I hate them. Like, I just wish that they could live forever. And I just, um, I know he's really old, but I just am never ready to lose him. You're a good boy. And it's your birthday soon. You've got to come to your party. You ready? Come on. This way. Let's go this way. Good job. In Sydney, Kate and 14-year-old Benny have arrived for surgery to remove his spleen, which has a life-threatening tumour growing on it. But I had this moment last night when I thought, if I get in there and he's just got tumours everywhere and he's covered in cancer, what am I actually going to do about that? Am I going to be able to put him through ethically this surgery in a really old dog to give him, say, extra two months? And I think the answer is no. Hi, Dr. Eugene. Hello, Dr. How Kate. are you? Lovely to see you again. Hello, Benny. Hello, my sweetie. How are you going? Kate is our specialist surgeon, Dr. Eugene Buffer, who has operated on Benny before to conduct the surgery. It's a nerve-wracking day, Eugene. I can imagine. He's, He's uh, getting old. Yeah, and he's very special. Very special. Yeah. The spleen is a blood storage organ, and when they develop masses or lesions, there's always a danger that that mass can rupture and if it ruptures it can be fatal. So that's the reason for our decision to proceed with surgery. Nice strong heart. Okay, so what we basically here for today is removing the spleen. Kate is asked to be present during surgery in case life and death decisions about her beloved Benny need to be made. My feeling on this, Eugene, is let's just say we kind of get in there and go, oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but yeah. let's just say that it does, right? I'm going to put him down. You know, it's about him. Yeah, that's right. We don't want him to suffer. Yeah. I promise you honesty, and if I think that this dog is not going to do well post-operatively, I will tell you. Yeah. I'll treat him as though he's my dog. Yeah. Kate requests two minutes alone with her beloved companion, Benny, before the surgery. Thanks, Eugene. Love your mum, don't you? Love your mum. You're gonna be okay, okay? You'll be tough. This isn't the end. Coming here, I thought, oh my gosh, this could be the last time I see him. I know that this love affair is gonna be over at some point. It's just always so hard to say goodbye. I love you. 
You're gonna be okay, okay? You'll be tough. This isn't the end. In Sydney, Kate is about to join Dr Eugene in surgery as he operates to remove a tumour diseased spleen from her much loved golden retriever, Benny. Everybody ready? Nice bold incision. The reason that I want to be in there today, it's actually because if I see in that abdomen and it's a disaster in there, then he's not going to be waking up from surgery today. I'm going to put him to sleep on the table. Okay, into the abdomen. We'll just go forward and backwards now. As well as the tumour on his spleen, Kate is worried they might find cancer in other parts of Benny's body. What's so, that on there? Could be sort of a granulomatous reaction where it's yeah. touching the liver. Yeah, right. So the kidney looks fine and his gallbladder, so that feels okay. Yeah. Thankfully, there's no sign of cancer in Benny's other abdominal organs. And hold that like that, please. Yep. That side we'll and that side. Yep. Eugene now checks the tumour on the ageing dog's spleen. So look, that's your mess. Oh, okay, so this yuck. was a good decision. Yeah, agree. Can you see it's already starting to rupture? Can you see the you momentum see. adhering to it? So this was a time bomb. Yeah, I okay. agree. So look at this. It's it's absolutely paper thin, yeah, it is. and it could burst. That is a dangerous lesion, and it's already starting to leak. It's a disaster. Yeah, it's a disaster. This has to come out. That spleen, it was very diseased and it, it could have ruptured at any time and that could have been fatal. So I think it was an excellent decision on Dr. Cates to elect for surgery and I think removing it is certainly going to extend the life of little Benny. Okay, you're going to have a go. Yeah. Eugene gets Kate to perform the final cut to remove Benny's spleen. Done. Done, there we go. This could have burst within the next couple of days. So this is so lucky that this is out. This could have been a completely life-ending situation for him. So thankful. You know, I think you're buying time for him now, which is great. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now it's over, I have felt like the weight of the world has just lifted off my shoulders. He's definitely not out of the woods, right? I get it. But honestly, I feel like this is the best day of my life. Hi, buddy. How are you? Are you good? With just three weeks until Benny turns 15, Kate can now get back to organising his extravagant birthday party. Such a tough dog. He may even reach his 16th birthday. You're a good boy. In Sydney, Benny and his adoring owner Kate are proudly celebrating his 15th birthday, three weeks after he underwent life-saving surgery. Well done. Party talks. Benny's holding up amazingly. I think everyone really worries about him and they're like, oh, he's 15, he's so old. I'm like, no, nah, Benny's fine. Like, he loves a good party. Fully recovered from his spleen removal operation, the resilient birthday boy is loving being the guest of honour. Benny has had a blast. I think this was the best day of his entire life. It's beyond my wildest dreams to think that Benny would even live this long. Good boy, good boy. This is about our journey together and this love story is not over yet. Unfortunately, two months later, Benny peacefully passed away with Kate by his side. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.